imagine a world that we are all included. Imagine a world where there's a sense of belonging. Uh, imagine a world where we can begin to unravel the trauma of years of separation, racism, xenophobia. I think we need to create an organization that is sustainable to, to fight the ways that racism evolves. It would be hubris for any particular organization to think that it alone could tackle these important uh, systemic and structural issues. And it requires uh, someone with the capacity and the acumen to be able to engage personally with people. I see King Boston and Amari sitting in the center of that and bringing us together in a way so that we can express and understand our common uh, humanity, but also understand that there is much work to be done. I think we're in this moment in time where we're starting to investigate and interrogate uh, the roles of objects that exist in the background. If we were to look at our monuments and memorials to try to get a sense of our society, what would a society look like to say, this was a society of love? To see what is happening with King Boss embracing the legacy is about bringing folks together. But the idea is, when you're in this role, it's what do you do when you're in this role, right? And for me, it's when you're willing to speak up, you're willing to step out. So there's so much about the values of who Amari is. Some people, I, you know, identify people with their titles and roles. I identify people about their values. Something special is happening in Boston. Something is, is, is being created in this moment that will not only bring about opportunity, but access equity for so many families in this city. I count Amari Parrish Jeffries as both a mentor and a friend. Uh, and I thank God for King's Ball, King Boston's partnership as we continue to work to make Boston not only a place that we will want to live in, but a place that can be a model to the nation. Boston is also one of America's storytellers. People could come here and learn about an inclusion uh, that occurred during the Revolutionary War. They could learn about the lives of indigenous and black folks. They could feel something different about our city. And then they can go back to their city and say, hey, American story is about inclusion. We're getting to the story of resistance, right? And not just survival, but thriving. And if nothing else, I think what we're trying to do here is cast imaginations um, for all of us. So when we think about the kings and what they represented and this notion of the beloved community, it was we are, we're all in this together. We're fighting with love together. Society told you you couldn't. Actually, you see that you can, and there's no reason why you cannot make that stranger your family or make that stranger a friend. King Boston is pivotal in the change making that's going on in Boston. And it's been uh, interesting to watch this organization form and then take on the most important issues of our time. I think it's so incredibly important to have people in our community who are pushing us, who are pushing us to think differently. One of the things that really struck me about King Boston and really some of the amazing leadership that I think Amari has been able to bring to King Boston has been its role as a convener. And it's bringing together all these different perspectives to work together towards that shared vision of a better future for all of us. It really embodies in some ways what we're trying to celebrate through our own Hopes and Dreams Gala, that there, you can have hope, you can have dreams for a better future. That's what we're trying to do with, with the families we serve, um, and that's what King Boston is trying to do for our city and for our community. You know, we have to ask ourselves, and we have an opportunity to ask ourselves, how much more inclusive is Boston now? Maybe we have a chance of, of being that, that city on the hill that we want to be as, um, as Bostonians.